Thank you for joining us for episode two of the Dig For, the Digital Forensic Series. Uh, my name is Jared Barnhart with Celebrate, and I'm very, very happy to have my good friend, Ed Wagrowski, joining me here today. Uh, Ed is a, an examiner in Michigan, and me and Ed go back several years. I uh, had Ed in a training class, uh, and sort of the community aspect of digital forensics, we lean on each other here and there for questions and comments and, and needs within uh, digital forensics. So pass it over to you, Ed. Give me a little background about yourself, where you work, uh, and then we'll get going here. Yeah, um, you know, you know, my name is Ed Wagrowski. I'm a detective at the Oakland County Sheriff's Office uh, in Michigan, which is Oakland County's north of Detroit. Uh, we have 900 uh, sworn deputies. That includes uh, the Road Patrol, which is more than half of that, and then corrections as well. Um, we have there's four of us in our office, and that does computer crimes. Um, and then we have a sergeant. He does mostly administrative stuff. I've uh, been in law enforcement uh, 27 years, and I've been doing computer crimes uh, for the past nine years. Awesome, awesome. Um, one of the the things that I really appreciate about about Ed is he's he's light, he's fun, uh, but he's also super knowledgeable. Um, you know, I, I I did forensics for many years, but I ask Ed questions, and he has experience that's different from mine. Um, and so again, I, I really appreciate being able to lean on on Ed for lots of different things uh, with work and and otherwise. Ed, I, I wanted you to to share with with the folks um, a couple of war stories. I think you have two you'd like to bring up. Uh, but you know, in police work, you tend to have these really fun investigations, and it's 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 kind of a good story. And sometimes you tell people and they're just shocked, and you feel like it's kind of an everyday thing. Um, so if you can share one or two of those stories with us, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, the um, so I do. I, there's two that stick out in my mind. Uh, one of them is I like because just thinking outside the box. And we had a case that was a, de a detective up in Orion Township who had a uh, improper posting. An ex boyfriend had posted pictures um, of an ex girlfriend, and the he wanted to get charges on it. And the prosecutor said, "Well, we don't know if the suspect was in Oakland County, um, so we can't issue charges on him." And so he called and he's like, you know, is there a way to figure out how, if this guy was in Oakland County? And I, I'm like, well, yeah, do we know when the pictures were posted? And he, so he already searched the uh, search one of the, the company that the, the website and had that information. And I said, well, if, just get the call detail records um, from his carrier. If we know his phone number and we knew the phone number and we were able to determine that he had used cell towers at the times of the postings um, in Oakland County. So he was able to get those charges against that guy. So I like that one just because it's just thinking outside the box, outside of you know how to get to the end of the end result. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think you know in digital forensics we sometimes get hyper focused on on the on disk or on device content, um, but you know this this job isn't isn't linear. It's, it's not you know worked in a box. Um, right. so the, the call detail records is certainly a you know. An investigative technique uh, that is has been around for a while and, and continues to be extremely relevant. So, like I, I love that you add that perspective uh, for some of the folks that are maybe joining that only do the the mobile or computer forensics. Uh, it's certainly a different animal to tackle the CDRs. Um, the other story that you had in mind, the other one actually was what really got you and I um, yeah, yeah. friends. Yeah, um, I after after your 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 teaching us at uh, CCPA over here in Bloomfield Township, um, was uh, the, uh, there was a poker player um, in the White Lake area. She was on TV and stuff like that for playing, you know, um, World Series poker, whatever it's called. Anyways, she was murdered. And um, it was, you helped me with the investigation on, like th the guy was saying that he wasn't near her or didn't know her, but we had video footage, it was grainy. And so we, tr we knew the hotel he was staying at um helping you help figure out you with because he had an iphone and and dumping um you or finding out the steps that he took you know when the car was parked uh we had to determine if her her phone was inside because i think he had what was it an audi right we were talking we talked about yeah, yeah. yeah. so so we, we we did that you know we dumped the the car wasn't supported with you know getting data from that so um that was that was a good that was a good case and actually that just got adjudicated not too long ago that like he was found guilty after after trial very good. Yeah. And, and, you know, as I started this, I sort of talked about the, the community and, and, and using each other as resource. Uh, last episode, we had Alexis on and he, you know, puts out his open source tool and, and there's lots of folks like him um, that, that we can lean into, um, but also sort of the, the journey of digital forensics. And, 
you know, years ago when you had to ask me that question um, and I was able to help you. And then you surely have been able to help others along the way. Uh, now people come to you with questions come, and come to you with devices. Um, and now that you have more, more experience and, and you're super comfortable in your trade, um, now you sort of get to help those other people as well. But I, I loved that, that poker player story because I remember um, just needing like that one little detail. And it was and yeah. it's sort of the spirit of the show, like that one thing that you had to dig for. It wasn't just something that was surfaced for you. Um, it was that next step. And, and we were able to work through that together. And it was a really good um, collaboration, really good case. And kudos to you and the, and the other folks for the successful. Oh, White Lake PD, the um, detective there did a fantastic job. So shout out to that guy as well. Perfect. All right. Uh, pivoting to a different, uh, a different topic. Um, I, as I travel around and speak to different officers, different uh, users, different digital forensics folks, um, this answer is is often very, very different. Um, but what's the hardest part of your day? Like, what's the, the most difficult thing that you have to deal with? The, the hardest part of my day, and, you, you know, I mentioned I've been doing this for nine years and knowing people like yourself and other people that celebrate and other contacts I've made. Um, our agency, our office has leaned on heavily for a, a bunch of stuff, uh, you know, vehicles, DVRs, all that, CDRs. And I hate when someone comes to us with a problem, with a situation, and they don't have anywhere else to go. And we tell them the information you're looking for either isn't available or it's not supported. Or I hate telling people no. I hate not being able to help somebody just because we've gotten so good at it. Those rare cases just, yeah, I really don't like it. Yeah, yeah. So the frustration of of feeling like you're comfortable and you're sort of, the, you know, you're the expert now. You you can do a lot of things and then having one come through that you can't do uh and and just trying to dream up a way to make it work. Like that's that's it's it's tough. Um but you know, I think a lot of times if we if we put those those cases on pause and give them a little bit of, like a few months, sometimes the technology comes around. Um but it it's certainly a, a difficult thing. Um now, sort of segueing from that right into the next thing, turning people away because you're not able to do a, that thing for them that day. Um, which part of the, of the process brings you the most friction then um, with with sort of your your lab environment and what you're able to do? Um, the tools we have, uh, one, one thing I got to say is, is our boss, the sheriff, he he doesn't mind spending money on our unit. You know, we're not restricted by budget for the most part, um, but when we have so much work to do, um, a month behind on just dumping phones, uh, when when a tool's being used, whether it's premium or some other tool that I need to get, you know, a phone on, um, it, it's tied up because premium's doing its job on another phone. So I just got to sit there and wait, um, you know, hour, two hours, whatever the heck it might be. So I, I that's the only thing that I really don't like is just having to sit and wait because then you find something else to do and so on and so forth. So. Sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, you said, you said that very quickly, but to me, I, I, I heard uh, you're, you're fortunate in that your administration believes in the work that you're doing. I know that the other folks in this oh, job yeah. are still in the, in the convincing phase of saying like, this is, this is worth the time, the effort to spend um, that you have the resources and, and the administration believes in, in you and what you're doing. So that's a, that's a huge kudos to you. Um but also the resources and, and the workflow and resources is sort of a constant conversation. Um, so for you to say waiting on the waiting on the tool and waiting on the thing, and I, you know, I, I'm not sure we'll ever get it perfect, uh, but it's a reality. No, I, I'd, I'd, I'd have to have seven. I'd have to have seven premiums sitting there just waiting to be used, and I can't right. justify spending money on that. So <laughs> very good. All right. Um, <clears throat> so in your journey in forensics, or you know, sort of this digital investigative field. Um, what is something that you once were not confident in that now you feel like you're pretty good at? Oh, the whole job overall. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, no, I, I, gosh, I think back to, you know, everybody has to start out somewhere. And I think back to just being the trainee and asking a million and a half questions and feeling like I was dumb as a fence post. But no, I, one thing I, I love, because when um, our now Sergeant, Sergeant Elgis, we came in the unit together um, nine years ago. And he was really good because he was a, at a detective spot before. He was really good at call detail records. And I just I just admired how quickly he was able to decipher them, understand them. Um, the key to those, if people are just getting into them, I'll tell you the explanation page is the most important part of any call detail records. Uh, but anyways, just knowing call detail records and just being able to 
figure it out really quick, knowing which ones are in UTC, which ones are in local time, which one are in central, whatever the heck. So no call detail records is probably the one thing I, I'm really proud that I'm able to help people with. That's awesome. And and I think, it, you know, as you describe yourself there, I, I know that you have a level of confidence in your ability to help others because you know that if I can't get in the phone, I have this other option that I can that I can rely on to maybe do something for you. Um, to prove a location or to prove a contact or whatever it might be. Um, so that's that's certainly a a different perspective. Uh, we don't dig into CDR analysis a ton, but uh, I I love that you're good at it. Um, and I'm yeah. sure I'm sure those that you serve, the detectives and folks around you that ask you questions, I'm sure they're very happy that you're good at it too. Well, it, it, it's true because some of them they'll send off work because that's what they've been told to do as by their training officer in the detective unit. They get the call detail records, and then they have fifteen pages of Excel of an Excel spreadsheet. And they're like, well, "What do I do with this? It's it's, sure. it's 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 crazy." So if you don't look at them all the time, you have no idea what you're looking at. So yeah, and and it, and it also sort of touches on on the importance of preserving records and 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 getting them even if you don't know that you need them. Right. Because you never know when it might Absolutely. be a case that takes a long time and you have to circle back and and rely on on that content that you had from maybe a year or two ago. Um, and if cool. you don't get it, the carrier doesn't that might not maintain it two sure. years after you realize you need it. Right. Right. Um, all right. Um, I'm not going to I'm not going to pretend to to really intro this part. So I'm going to pass it to you. But um, I want you to. Share with us something that you learned um, from the Oxford High School shooting from November of 2021 as a, a person that had to live through it, had to investigate it, um, and from the sort of the digital forensics view of, of that case. And I know that part of it's still up for adjudication. So um, just, just something you can share with us, a, a perspective that's, uh, that's really different than anything we would know not having lived through that investigation. Yeah. Um, one thing that I, I found really, my, now my role in that, um, we had one person responsible for um, a certain set of phones, another person responsible for another set of phones, and then I was responsible for um, maintaining the video and, and getting the video of, of the incident from the uh, school cameras. And um, I was able to, to witness our deputies responding and, and stuff like that. And I was able to, to see the confidence that our, our people had um, and talk about it. And I, what I'm getting at is, is mental health. When, when you deal with a situation like that, it, our agency, again, there's got, I hate to keep saying our agency is so great and it's doing everything right, but, um, they're, they're we, our captain and sheriff is really stresses, uh, our peer support program and getting people help that have been in traumatic situations and stuff like that. And I, I've had times where I've gone up to people that were some of the initial responders, and I said, hey, you know, I, I tell them, listen, I don't know if this means anything to you, but I just wanted to tell you, um, I could really tell your your training kicked in. You did a fantastic job. You you didn't show that, you know, you weren't you didn't look like you were afraid. And they've actually said that that was one thing that's helped them the most is to hear that, because we always question that I do the right thing, that I that I help, you know, as many as I can. And uh, so it's really nice to hear that. Yeah. And wow. Um Policing is uh, is a lot of times described as a thankless job, and and I think um, you know the mental health aspect in, in the recent years has become uh, you know more of a focus. Um, but what you described there of of you, an officer taking the time to go just say that soft comment to another officer, yeah, uh, and, and basically say like, hey, you know, I'm sure it was terrible being in your shoes, but you did great, um, and it was tough, and it's tough to watch, and it's tough to investigate, but hey, good job. Um, I'm no, sure. and I, the, the, the one that pops in my head, um, like the look on their face when I, when I said that, they sort of looked at me puzzled, like, um, why, you know, should we really be talking about that? I don't know. It's hard to describe what her face looked like. Um, but I, it got back to me um, that they, they really appreciated, you know, hearing that. So yeah. it's nice to know that outside of the forensic world and the stuff that we do in our office that, you know, helping people in that way too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, be a kind human uh, is, is sometimes Be a kind it's human. You're right, but Be it's a kind human. Th again, th thanks for sharing that piece. I know it's not you know probably the most fun thing to talk about, um, but just the reminder of of preserving your mental health and considering you know what others are experiencing, and especially in digital forensics, we we know that we have uh, you know certain uh, image cases and things that can be very tough to work through, and 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 so just you know again. Uh, relying on those around you, uh, the support system, um, and 
you know, taking care of yourself as well. It's very important. No, I agree, hundred percent. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of end this on a little bit of a lighter note. Uh, and this is really the most serious question that I have for you today, Ed. When I send you text messages, I get this this terrible green bubble that comes back. It's supposed to be blue, but for some reason yours yours is green. Can you can you please explain for me and everyone else why that happens? Right, because you're an Apple user. Yeah. Um, well, what that means, and for the people that don't know, uh, we're just getting into forensics. Apple phones, when they receive a text message from a superior device, it indicates it being green, um, usually an Android. And uh, it probably the user does have an above average intelligence. I would, I'd have to say that, too. Oh, that's great. No, actually, Ed, if you, if you remember back, I think it was John that gave me a call. Um, and, and, and his initial question to me was, Hey, we're working through, it was the ID status cache on iPhones. Yes. And it was sort of this authentication piece of, you know, when you type a phone number in and it turns blue and it authenticates or it stays green in the values. Um, so that really takes me back to where you and I started. Cause I think you called me the same day or the next day. And, and then, you know, here it was, I think the, the next day, cause yeah. I remember John talking to you and I'm like, and he's like, he's like, just call Jared. I'm like, Oh man, do, I mean, is that something we really do? Uh, and then I called you and okay. well, here we are. How many years later? I, I'm glad you called. I'm glad that you uh, you joined me here today. Thank you. Yes, so thank you. Much. Thank you so much for, for sharing your insights, um, your perspective. Uh, and as always, you know, putting a smile on my face. Um, for those that joined, thank you so much for, for taking the time out of your day. Um, please remember to like and subscribe to this. Um, we have more content coming up on YouTube. Um, and remember, what you're looking for might not be on the surface. Sometimes you need to dig.